we continue with our discussion of uh, orthogonal uh, vector. So, we have given a vector space V over the field of general complex number. So, the dimension of the vector space is given to be dimension of V is given to be say P. Okay. There is an inner product, there is an inner product defined on this, okay, which takes every pair of vectors from V and gives you a scalar value and satisfies some constraints okay, some that you have seen last time. In that case, suppose you have been given and we have also told that if two vectors are orthogonal, that is the inner product is 0, they are called orthogonal and if each vector has norm equal to unity and they are mutually orthogonal, then they are called orthonormal. That is normalized, each vector is normalized so that the norm, norm is unity, norm means inner product square root, inner product with itself for the square root of that. It is equivalent to the length in the case of diamond di directional vector. Okay. And we have also shown that given any vector, non-zero vector, you can take its norm, take the square and divide the vector by the norm okay, and it becomes a unit norm. Okay, so, you can always normalize, so, normalization is not a problem. Now, suppose there exists, this existence will be seen later, but suppose there exists a set of vectors alpha 1, this is what I was doing last time alpha 2 dot 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 say alpha m element of v and no alpha i is equal to 0 for i equal to 1 dot dot m. Okay. There is none of them is a 0 vector, 0 vector has norm equal to 0 that we have seen, 0 vector inner product with itself gives you scalar 0, the norm of, of 0 vector is in fact, that was one of the axiom, the norm of a vector is 0 if and only if the vector is the 0 vector, otherwise norm is always a real and non-negative number and not is greater than equal to 0 and equal to 0 if and only if the vector is the 0 vector, but I am excluding the 0 vector here. Hmm. So, this is given, this is and of course, I am taking m less than equal to p, we will see that we have already seen this repetition, but we will see why it is same less than equal to p. Hmm and uh, they are mutually orthogonal. Alpha i, alpha j in general is what? If alpha i and alpha j, i and j are different, then the inner product is 0, otherwise it is some constant. Constant means alpha u it itself. So, it is a real non-negative constant and it is of course, real positive constant because no alpha is 0 vector. So, if I write lambda i delta i minus j, that means when i equal to j, lambda i stands for the norm square of alpha i. A lambda is not only is real in this case strictly positive because alpha is given to be non-zero vector. This is the case. Then my claim was that this set is a linearly independent set, not the other way because linear I mean you can be a given a vector space and a set of vectors linearly independent, but does not mean that they are orthogonal. In fact, you may not have an inner product defined on a vector space always, but given that they are mutually orthogonal and nobody contains a zero vector, this forms a linearly independent set. Okay. So, if they span a space, this forms the basis of that space subspace because they are linearly independent. So, that will then it will then be called the orthogonal basis of the span of this set. Okay. Anyway, suppose that I mean I have to prove that they are linearly independent. I form this summation 0 vector. If this equation has only one solution that all coefficients are 0, then they are linearly independent. That was the way to prove it, isn't it? If this equation has only one solution possible, that is all the coefficient 0 and no other solution, non zero solution for the coefficient exists, then they are linearly independent, right. So, suppose I have to find out a particular coefficient c k, you have to find out c k. What I do? I take the left hand side, take its inner product of the left hand side, this left hand side with alpha k. C k with alpha k here in this summation. So, I take inner, inner product with alpha k. This also 0 with alpha k, right. But we have already proved 0 inner product with 0 vector is always scalar 0. So, it is scalar 0. And in this summation, it is summation. So, you use one of the axioms, you can it will break it into what? Inner product between C 1 alpha 1 and alpha k, then inner product between C 2 alpha 2 alpha k dot dot dot. You understand the first axiom or second axiom, you can separate out, it is linear in the first coordinate. And again C 1 alpha 1 comma alpha k, C 1 can go out by another axiom, but alpha 1 comma alpha k is 0, alpha 2 comma alpha k is 0 dot dot dot, only alpha k comma alpha k non-zero, because alpha k, no, no alpha is a 0 vector. So, inner product with itself, there is norm square is non-zero, positive real. 
So, only that survives, other inner products they become 0. So, what happens from the left? C k norm alpha k square equal to scalar 0, and this is positive because no alpha is 0. This has to be positive and positive only, real and positive, which means C k 0. So, this is a proof that all the coefficients have to be 0. So, it is a linearly independent set. Hmm. Now, I just thought, I just said that suppose it exists, whether it exists, this kind of things exist or not, we will see later, little later. But suppose you take alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha m, what is the largest value of m that can be? m can be equal to at most p. Firstly, if you consider w to be span of The W is a suspense, suspense of what? All possible linear combinations of alpha 1 to alpha m, but they are mutually orthogonal and therefore, they are linearly independent. So, that means alpha 1 to alpha m is a basis in this case, is not it? They are linearly independent, no redundancy, any vector in W is a unique linear combination of this, all that is fine. It is a basis and what kind of basis? We will give a special name, orthogonal basis or even you can say orthonormal basis, if you take the norm of each, if you normalize this vector to have norm equal to 1, then we will call them, we will call it orthonormal basis of W. But W is clearly this, is not it? Now, suppose m equal to p, suppose m is equal to p and still if W is contained in V, that means outside W, that is if this is strictly this, still outside W inside V, we can find out another vector. Suppose alpha 1 to alpha m, m goes up to P, firstly if m is less than P, there is no problem, because our theory was that, that if the dimension is P, that means any linearly independent set can have at most P vectors in V, it cannot be more than P, that is what I said. Is it? And then we came to this dimension that suppose you start with a ve you know vectors alpha 1, alpha 2, remember, I mean you have you have to go at p only and then only alpha 1 to alpha p will span the interspace v, otherwise if you stop halfway between, then the span will have something outside still contained in v, from there you can pick up somebody and append to this alpha sequence, you can form a larger basis and so and so, is not it? Here also suppose you have got alpha 1 to alpha m and uh, m is equal to p. In that case, you can easily see the W has to be equal to V, because if it W is not equal to V, W is subset of W is always equal to I mean V contained in V or is equal to V, W cannot be over above V, because each alpha is an element of V. So, any linear combination of this alpha 1 to alpha is an element of V. So, W is a subspace of V. Question is, is it a proper subspace, proper subset or subspace or is it equal to V? Question is, if M equal to P m cannot be greater than equal to p firstly, greater than p, because then that will violate that thing that a vector space that has dimension p contains a set of vectors which are linearly independent, but total number larger than p, that is not possible, see the thing, we are trying to under gain some insight, we have got alpha 1 to alpha m, can m be greater than p, answer is no, because dimension of the vector space is p, that means, if you consider any linearly independent sign, maximum number that is possible is p and that will form a basis of the interspace v. So, you cannot have more than this, m cannot be greater than p, okay. m can be less than p, no problem, I picked up 1 alpha 1, alpha 2, they are all part of v, m less than p is no problem, but suppose m is equal to p, if m is equal to p, then my claim is w is same as v, suppose it is not, suppose w is still a proper subspace of v then obviously, I can go outside W, still remain in V, pick up somebody from there and if I append that somebody from to this, it will still be a linearly independent set, but total will be P plus 1, which is a contradiction, is not it? It is not possible. The moment I reach P, M equal to P, that means W has to be V. Outside W and still inside V, there is nothing left which added to this will form a linearly independent set. Okay. In that case, W becomes V and this alpha 1 to alpha m will be called uh, orthonormal basis of V itself, not just of W, but V itself. Okay. 
but provided such a thing exists or starting assumption like a mathematician I am speaking now that I said first that suppose there exists a set of vectors like this in V which are mutually orthogonal maybe normal orthonormal and none of them is a 0. If they exist they are linearly dependent and since they are linearly dependent number m cannot be exceeding the dimension p it is less than equal to p when m equal to p the span is become same as v. This is pretty obvious is not it? Hmm? And if it will always exist right? Yeah, but how do you know it will always exist? Mathematically how do you know it will always exist? So, that means I have to develop a procedure by which I can show that I can construct such things is not it? Generally it will you will know that it exists. That is done by what you know as Gram Smith orthogonalization which is very common in uh, communication in particular. All of you know Gram Smith yeah, but maybe you have done it in the question of signals and all we have to still do it in that abstract thing okay, domain. That will prove the existence of such kind of thing and it is not only unique you can choose I mean you can have as many such combinations as possible you know. Hmm which means a vector space V can have as many orthogonal bases as possible, I mean there is nothing fixed. So, suppose I take a vector alpha 1 and alpha 1 non 0, obviously none of them will be 0 element of V. Alpha 1 I have normalized, so that this is not necessary for this proof, but it makes life little simple. This is equal to 1. Even if it was not having unit norm, I can always divide by the norm and make it unit norm and call it alpha 1. That much is fine. And w 1 is the span of alpha 1. Okay. Then take some alpha 2 prime element of v not element of w 1. Obviously, we have seen earlier alpha 2 prime and alpha 1 Li, we have seen earlier while proving dimension and all that we have seen earlier. And you consider the span ok. Now, consider develop a vector say alpha 2 tilde, this is tilde. as some linear combination of these two, but in the linear combination maybe I choose things like this. If it is C 1 alpha 2 prime plus C 2 alpha 2 prime what I am doing I am trying to economize here I can take C 1 common. So, it is C 1 times within bracket alpha 2 prime plus some constant times alpha 1. So, I for the, for the time being forget about C 1 because ultimately this will have C 1 will only change the norm of that and ultimately I will make it unit norm by dividing, the, dividing it by, by its norm. So, why at all bother about C 1? You understood my logic. You can deal with two coefficients, but I will for the time being even if you write C 1 alpha 2 prime plus C 2 alpha 2 alpha 1, I will take C 1 common okay. and alpha 2 tilde by C 1 let that be new alpha 2 tilde. If I know alpha 2 tilde and finally, I will make it unit norm. So, once you make it unit norm whether you put the C 1 there or not does not matter is not it. So, I will for the time being keep the coefficient here 1 and say a coefficient here C 1 hmm. say C 1 1 I am putting C 1 1 because or C just a minute C 2 1 because this first index will uh, show the iteration number iteration 1 was here w 1 we consider this is iteration 2 w 2 that time we have got a coefficient. So, this will indicate this 2 C 2 and 1 means I have got only one term alpha 1 fine. Suppose I construct a term like this you understand alpha 2 tilde hmm. alpha 2 tilde contained in w 2 is not it. Firstly how to choose the coefficient this is contained in w 2 agreed. I choose the coefficient so that the inner product between alpha 2 tilde and alpha 1, alpha 1 is already there, okay. It is like this, you know. I mean, 
draw a figure. Suppose this is your unit norm alpha 1, this is your alpha 2 tilde. I am linearly combining them to get a vector in this direction. Okay. This is not alpha 2 tilde, so this is alpha 2 prime, no, this alpha 2 prime, this is given, these two are not orthogonal. This was spanning a space along this line, I went outside, brought this fellow, these two are linearly independent, together they span a space what? This plane and that is w 2. Within w 2, I am forming a alpha 2 tilde vector, so that that is orthogonal to this. So, that will be a linear combination of two. So, I choose the coefficient with this to be 1 and uh, some coefficient here. So, I will still be in this direction provided I choose the coefficient correctly and then I will normalize it. So, this with inner product with itself would be 0. So, this I want to be 0. That means, if you replace this by here alpha 2 prime and uh, this thing C 2 1 alpha 1, what will you get? Alpha 1 with itself is 1 because normalized. So, this will give rise to some coefficient C 2 1 as Okay. Assume that the alpha 2 prime is here, it, it was it I mean by chance you could have again taken alpha 2 prime itself in this direction, that is alpha 2 prime could have been taken by you as orthogonal to alpha 1. In that case, obviously this is 0 and this is some constant times alpha 1, uh, this guy is constant times alpha 2 prime and this is alpha 2 prime only. Isn't it? And alpha 2 prime is in that normal dire direction orthogonal, fine, that is a special case, mind you. When you do not have that, it will, you will have non zero value. When you do not have that, you have a non zero value, otherwise, zero value, it can have zero value. I am just giving you more implications. If you have zero value here, it will only mean this and this are same means because you, if you, you took this to be orthogonal to this, this also will be same, but this will be orthogonal to this, and then I will normalize this. Normalization is no problem. So, I will get then alpha 2 tilde by its norm, I will be calling the giving the name alpha 2 unit norm. Now, I am finding this coefficient, fine. Now, one thing you see span of, I make the clamp span of this thing actually alpha 2 prime alpha 1 which I call w 2 that is same as span of alpha 2 tilde alpha 1. That is span of these two lines is same as span of these two lines. Hmm. You understand what I am trying to say span of these two is same as span of these two, but these two are orthogonal. Okay. So, that means for I will prove it, but that means for w 2 we started with a non orthogonal basis and got an orthogonal basis. Okay. Got an orthogonal basis. Now, this is very easy to show. Consider any vector of this, consider a vector, any vector v, element of this, element of this, that will be a linear combination of this, is it? That will be a linear combination say C 1 alpha 2 prime plus C 2 alpha 1 in general, but alpha 2 prime I have already find found out alpha 2 prime is this minus this alpha 2 prime is alpha 2 tilde minus. So, basically you replace alpha 2 prime by that I, I am not showing some extra says please see alpha 2 prime if I replace alpha 2 prime by alpha 2 tilde minus C 2 1 alpha 1. So, this again becomes a linear combination of alpha 2 tilde and alpha 1 only. So, it is co contained in this a V element of this is writable like this and alpha 2 prime you write as alpha 2 tilde minus C 2 1 alpha 1 and so you get a linear combination of alpha 2 tilde and alpha 1 only finally which is then contained in this. That means, left hand side that means, L H S contained in R H S 
on the other end take any value from here alpha it will be a linear combination of the two ok. So, it will take v prime as some d 1 times alpha 2 tilde plus d 2 times alpha 1 and alpha 2 tilde we replace by this ok. So, obviously, this is contained in this contained in w 2 ok. Is it clear or not? That means, R H is also contained in L H s. So, means R H s and L H s are same. Is not it? Any question on this? Any see alpha 2 prime is linearly related to alpha 2 tilde and alpha 1 hmm. and vice versa alpha 2 prime is linearly related to alpha 2 tilde and alpha 1 and therefore, wherever you get alpha 2 prime you replace it by a linear expression. So, that linear combination becomes a linear combination of alpha 2 tilde and alpha 1 which is part of this and vice versa just like this this uh, these two span of these two and then we replace this as a linear combination of the two. So, that means if you take any linear combination of this fellow and this fellow that effectively becomes a linear combination of this fellow and this fellow. So, span of these two is contained in the span of these two and vice versa ok. So, I have w 2 and w 2 span by equivalently I can also write in the normalized form w 2 is now span by alpha 2 alpha 1 instead of alpha 2 tilde I just normalize it. So, alpha 2 alpha 1. So, this is important for me. So, I had one subspace w 1 I got a vector of unit norm which is spanning that. Then I have w 2 which is spanned by an orthonormal basis out of which one is alpha 1 and other is alpha 2 they are mutually orthogonal each having unit norm and w 2 w 2 contains w 1 of course. Now, I will go outside w 2 I will do that procedure outside w 2 pick up another fellow call it alpha 3 prime prime from that I will develop alpha 3 tilde and then tilde I will finally, normalize I will call it alpha 3. Okay, uh, this is another step after that it will be very clear. So, now I take alpha 3 prime outside that is contained in V not contained in W 2. You understand I am doing the same thing like I took alpha 2 prime now I am taking alpha 3 prime contained V not in contained in W 1 earlier now W 2. Okay. So, if I append that if I append this will be that is this is a linearly independent set alpha 3 prime alpha 2 alpha 1 this may not be orthogonal to this. It is like you know after having done this I am now going into the third dimension and not necessarily I am not getting a vector directly perpendicular to this I am getting a vector at an angle calling it alpha 3 prime from that I will try to get at a vector perpendicular to this plane and then normalize it and again I will show that if you take this vector which is angular I mean which is at some angle not 90 degree with this plane that and these two they span the same space as the space spanned by this this and the one perpendicular to this. Okay. What I did in two dimension I am doing in three and then uh, it will be clear. So, these three form a linear linearly independent set because after all alpha 3 prime was taken out from outside w 2. So, if you append that to the basis of w 2 this forms a linear independent set. So, L i let w 3 be span of ok hmm? this span and alpha 3 prime from this I want to develop a vector alpha 3 tilde as a linear combination. So, that that of these three so that that is contained in w 3 what kind of linear combination in general it could be some c 1 times this plus c 2 times this plus c 3 times this c 1 I will take common. So, that this leading i or if you call it c 3 c 3 times alpha 3 prime plus c 2 times alpha 2 plus c 1 times alpha 1 c 3 I will take common. So, that this guy has coefficient 1 others have some coefficient and C 3 will not matter because finally, I will be normalizing this vector. So, that this has unit norm 
you understand absolutely similar step I am doing up to this level so that I mean you understand how recursively this will go on. So, alpha 3 prime will be of this kind of form alpha 3 prime plus some coefficient now c 3 1 c 3 2 iteration number 3 c 3 2 so that so that this is orthogonal to both mind you earlier it was alpha 2 tilde was orthogonal only to alpha 1 now this must be orthogonal to bo both these so that alpha 3 tilde with alpha 1 0 and alpha 3 tilde with alpha 2 0 both. So, now you can generalize if I have more w 4 w 5 this leading guy should be orthogonal to the rest which are forming a mutually orthonormal set already because of our previous stage of construction alpha 1 alpha alpha 2 they form a mutual I mean orthogonal state already you have orthonormal state we have already seen. Okay. Alpha 3 prime which you got it is not orthogonal to them. So, I am forming a linear combination which is orthogonal to them and then after that I will normalize it so that it has unit norm. Essential thing is this still remain in W 3. Hmm. So, from this equation you can easily see if you take if you replace this here with alpha 1 if you take the inner product alpha 1 and alpha 2 are orthogonal that term will disappear na? that is the important thing. So, that means C 3 2 will be what minus alpha 3 prime with alpha 2 very easy to write down the expressions and C 3 1 will be minus if it so happen you took this vector alpha 3 prime which is orthogonal to at least one of the two then the corresponding coefficient will be 0. So, it is fine if it is already orthogonal to both both the coefficients are 0 and alpha 3 this this fellow which I want to be orthogonal to both alpha 1 and alpha 2 so will be same as the one you have picked up. Okay, so, you got this coefficient and now I will again make the statement that span of and from alpha 3 prime you normalize it alpha 3 tilde sorry from this you go to alpha 3 equal to by its norm. So, you need norm symbolically it might look very complex, but it is nothing I have got this vector take in norm and divide. So, that it becomes unit norm. So, on and so forth you can have alpha 4 alpha 5 and I make this statement span of alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 prime which is your w 3 which is same as span of alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3. Obviously, any vector here is a linear combination of 3, but alpha 3 prime can be written as a linear combination of alpha 3 tilde and therefore, this alpha 3 also because alpha 3 tilde is nothing but this norm times this. So, any alpha 3 prime in a linear combination of these 3 can be replaced by a linear combination of alpha 3, alpha 1, alpha 2 is not it. So, that means that will be linear combination of these 3 only. So, this entire set is contained in this and vice versa. Here if you take the span if you take any linear combination of these 3 alpha 3 is this by this and this is equal to this linear combination. So, essentially it will be a linear combination of these 3 elements. So, that means any vector here is contained in the span here. So, this span is contained in the span here. So, A contained in B and B contained in A means A and B are same. So, both are same. So, remember I started with W 1 picked up somebody from outside got W 2 then picked up somebody from outside got W 3, but each time I am constructing an orthonormal basis for the respective first process from W 1 to W 2 W 3, but as you know this process will finally terminate at n equal to p p f step because dimension of the vector space is p after that w p will be same as v. I will not have any vector which lies outside w p and still inside v, but that by that time by this process I will be constructing an orthogonal basis for w p which is alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha c dot dot up to alpha p they are orthonormal in fact which will be the span of which will then uh, be the basis for v also because w p and v are same. 
So, that means, we can always construct such orthonormal basis or orthogonal basis for any vector space V and the choice is not unique. I took any alpha 1 for that I consider W 1 then I went outside W 1 took any W then we remember the word any W 2 any um, alpha 2 prime and then constructed W 2 and then went outside and took any alpha 3 prime remember the word any as a result there is no unique choice you can always construct your own kind of basis orthogonal basis given in your product definition ok. So, that means, such an orthogonal basis exists that basis is not unique, but orthogonal basis exists for inner product spaces at least for finite dimensional spaces where dimension is p and p is a finite number ok, p is a finite number. Now, why you are so bothered about orthogonal basis or orthonormal basis. Hmm? Suppose, you have a vector, you have a space V, you have suppose a space V, okay, vector space V and you are finding out and you have given an orthonormal basis for V. That is, let orth orthonormal eh? or orthogonal, orthogonal basis of V. That means, for for any V or all V vector element of V, V will be a linear combination of these terms. Is it? For any vector belonging to this vector space V, hmm? vector space V, it will be a linear combination, which is always happens in the case of basis, because this is after all a basis, it is not only orthonormal basis, after all it is a basis. So, any vector belonging to capital V will be a linear combination. In the case of basis, not necessarily orthogonal basis, just when we are dealing with simple vector space and no inner product defined, V was given, but how to get this coefficients from V? we did not study because that was difficult, but when inner product is defined and based on that inner product you got an orthogonal basis and then using this orthogonal basis if you linearly combine the elements and express any vector v, then I tell you each coefficient can be obtained very easily. Because suppose you want to find out the particular coefficient c k, that is there is a term here dot 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 plus c k alpha k plus dot dot dot, you want to find out what is c k. Immediately I will do this inner product of this with alpha k the corresponding basis vector. Here also you understand here all other terms will go only this c k alpha k comma alpha k will survive c k alpha k comma alpha k. If they are orthonormal this would have been one norm with I mean norm inner product of this way. in a general case when they are not orthonormal c k remember is this. This relation you have studied in DSP without understanding, this is called inverse transform relation and this relation is called transform relation like inverse DFT, DFT, inverse DCT, DCT, all transforms. I mean you can generalize from here to continuous time a function and all that. This will give us to inverse transform where a given function will be expressed as a linear combination of some basis thing and the combiner coefficient will be obtained from the given one and the basis particular basis function by a formula. I give you some example, then you will understand. Consider though it is not part of this course, otherwise it will become a bit dry. So, you understand the utility of the orthogonal transform, I can easily directly get this coefficient very easily. Now, I consider DSP, I consider sequences, say to start with real valued sequences hmm, of length say 4, length 4. Okay. In general, for real valued sequence of length capital N, dimension of the space is N. We have seen real valued sequences, real or complex does not matter, of length capital N means dimension N. And they are inner product between two sequences. If I denote the vectors as this manner, in this manner, Xn is a sequence, Yn is a sequence, I say I define an inner product. You do term wise multiplication, 
sample wise multiplication 0 is sample is 0 is sample after conjugation add in general for the complex case real means no conjugation when the real conjugation does not matter but otherwise this you can easily see this, this will be satisfying all the four axioms of inner product firstly if it is instead of xn if you make it c1 x1 plus say x1 plus x2 two sequence here you put within bracket x1 plus x2 you can separate out one summation with x1 another summation with x2 place so that means inner product is separable one will be inner product with x1 and y1 another will be x2 with y2 isn't it very easily you can see the linearity here if instead of x it is x1 plus x2 you put that here you can separate out the summation into two so you get two inner products one between x1 and y another between x2 and y so the number one satisfied number two is what instead of x if it is c times x that c should be could be taken out if you put c x in here c can be taken out the summation c times the inner product then another is if you interchange the two real taking inner product will be the conjugate of the earlier one now if you interchange two it becomes y n into x star n summation that is conjugate of this one and last one is inner product with itself that should be real non negative number and equal to 0 only if the vector is 0 now if you inner product with itself it becomes mod x n square sum mod x n square is always positive sum the sum will be 0 means each mod x n is 0 that is each sample is a 0 that means the sequence is all 0 sequence which is the 0 vector for the sequence space if it is not that summation will be non zero and positive in fact real positive if it was real always it will be positive so that means with respect to the inner product i can find out some sequences which are orthogonal that is whose this i mean you compute this kind of inner product between those sequences and they are orthogonal then they find i can construct orthogonal basis of single spaces and depending on the basis only you have dct dft and all transforms hmm. I can uh, cost. I can take up an exercise here. Suppose I am talking taking length four. Hmm. Suppose I take. You can play around with this. You know. Suppose I take length four sequences. That is, this capital N is four. So only four points. Zero, one, two, three. Okay. Suppose I take one basis as this. This is a length four sequence. One basis. Not normalized. Take this. Not normalized. Because if you take the norm of it, what do you get? If it is one. What do you get? 1 into 1, 1 into 1, 1 into 1, you know, 4. Isn't it? So, norm square is 4, norm is 2. So, if you divide by 2, 1 by 2, 1 by 2, 1 by 1 by 2, then you see one inner product with itself becomes 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 4, you add, it becomes 1. Okay. If you want, I can put this way 1 by 2, everybody. Then take another sequence, length 4, which is orthogonal to this, and you need norm. There are many ways of doing it many choice are the orthogonal this two are the sample wise multiplication and add this into this this into this whatever you get you get the negative of that here add zero isn't it these two are orthogonal but total how many are possible how many should be possible 4 because dimension is 4. Theoretically, I can take the span of these, go outside, get uh, give you a name of alpha 3 prime to the vector. From that, I construct alpha 3 finally, which is orthogonal to the both, but why that way? By using the intuition only, you can find out now. That is a theoretical way by intuition. Now, let me find out then that only tells you that you can take go up to 4. So, this is not enough. But how to get 3 and 4? You use your simple intelligence. Suppose I take Is this orthogonal to these two both? Hmm? Orthogonal. Height is of course half, so that when you multiply the sample by itself, you get one by four always, and uh, sum it becomes one. So this this is orthogonal to these three, and now find out another one, which is orthogonal to three both, uh, all the three, and therefore uh, I get a complete set because more, more, more than four is not enough; it's not possible and dimension is 4, that means this will be an orthogonal basis of the sequence space for sequence of length 4, is not it? And what will be that? Again, there are many choices, you take this way, let this be this and this be this, just take this and reverse it, see whether this is orthogonal to these three, 
sample wise multiply and add plus 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 minus 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 like that. Hmm? Are you following? These are called Wolf's Hadamard basis. So, a, any length force equation, I took just 4 here, it could be generalized to n, where n is a power of 2. The Hadamard thing works for Hadamard, you know, this kind of basis decomposition is fine if the length is power of 2 that way, either 4 or 8 or 16, okay, not for a 17 or 19, you will get that. This is a different matter. But say here, say length, any length force sequence that can be written as a linear combination of this force, that we will call the inverse transform relation. If you call them x0 n, x1 n, x2 n, x3 n. Then any x n will be a linear combination of p i x i n. This is the inverse transform relation, inverse Hadamard transform or inverse, where given vector is represented as a linear combination of some orthogonal basis vectors. How to find out c i? A particular c k or c i whatever use the formula and they are now ortho normalized is not it. They are normalized already. So, this denominator is 1 you simply have this numerator this is the inner product between x n and a particular one x k n. So, whether it, if it is x k n this put that back here. Hmm you get the corresponding coefficient. If this is this, put the sequence here and then carry out the inner product in this manner, sample is multiplication addition, you get C 2 like that. This will be called transform coefficients. Okay. Consider now a general case, since I have done this topic in a different way and that time I promised that I would come to this and treat it properly. Suppose, I consider the more general case of 0 to n minus 1 length n sequences which are in general real complex value could be real value also. I define a set of sequences e k n as e k n as this. take a basis basic thing e to the power j 2 pi by n 2 pi by n is a digital frequency k times that. If you call j 2 pi by n is the 2 pi by n is the fundamental frequency k times that and n is that so called time index equivalent of time index this is a frequency. Hmm. Okay. Then firstly they are I will show that and how many are there k equal to 0 1 dot 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 n minus 1. Then we will see that any two sequences are orthogonal, any two different sequences are orthogonal easily. You say inner product between e k n e m n if you call them vectors, what will that be? Second term has to be conjugated is not it and then summed, summed over this index n that was the definition of the inner product, sum over the index n, time index n and first one will be as it is, second one will be conjugated of that. So, it will be part j 2 pi k minus m by n into n, see this thing, why did I do all that? Here, sample wise multiplication after conjugation of the second guy, is not it? After conjugation of the second guy. So, sample wise multiplication, you just conjugate this. First one is not conjugated. So, 2 pi k by n, this k that remains k, when it is m, instead of k, you have m, e m n, so it becomes m that is conjugated as a minus sign, and you add them, you know this is 0, I told you, no? It is a GP series. If you consider this factor and call it a, it is a to the power small n, it is a GP series. So, its summation is 1 minus a to the power n by 1 by a, and if you raise a to the power n, n and n will cancel, a to the power j 2 pi into an integer, which is 1, 1 minus 1, 0. Otherwise, also it means what? 
you are taking a complex sinusoid and you are summing, you are summing the samples over an integral number of periods, so that becomes 0. So, the orthogonal not normalized, if you take the norm of this, what will be the norm by the way? What is the norm? Inner product with itself will be equal to what? N, because this with its conjugate and summation over uh, small n for n equal to 0 to n minus 1. Conjugate and this will cancel each other with 1 and 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, n times n. So, it is not orthogonal, I agree. But at least any x n can be written as a linear combination of this kind of vector instead of linear combinator coefficient, instead of denoting the combinator coefficients as c1, c2, c3, I, I denote them by the k is the index here, I denote them by capital X earlier I was denoting by c1, so this one was coming in the subscript, instead of subscript I say put it here within bracket and instead of c I put capital X, no problem, the coefficient and also I put a capital N here, this is by coefficient combiner coefficient into the corresponding term. Okay. This n can go out, this is my combiner coefficient, this vector times a coefficient, it, this entire thing is actually c k, c k times this, I am denoting like this and this is your inverse d f t relation. Then how the, how to get x k? How to get x k? Again, use that formula. Inner product of the given vector, there is x n with this divided by the norm, norm square, is not it? So, inner product of x n, you remember na, inner, so inner product of x n, x n times alpha k, I am interested in finding out x k, the corresponding basis sequence is this. So, inner product of x n with that, so it will be coming with conjugate. summation over n and this will give me x k by n by the way, this is the coefficient x k by n, x k by n will be what? Inner product between x n and the kth basis divided by the norm square of the kth basis. What is norm square? Norm is n, the norm square is n, n. So, what is x k? You get your d f t. Always remember transforms like this. Okay. I will not continue anymore now. From this orthogonal, this thing we will go for orthogonal projection. That is, we have shown orthogonality, we have shown its utility that any combiner coefficient can be obtained easily, efficiently by some formula. Orthogonal basis exists. We have seen grass meter orthogonalization, we have extended covered in detail. Examples of orthogonal basis we have seen in from DSP, all these transforms. Now, what we have to do is estimation, we are marching towards estimation. We'll, as I told you in the case of optical filtering, that the linear mean square estimation is basically an orthogonal projection computation. So, now we will be going to orthogonal projection, that is we will show that in a vector space V, that if you take a subspace W and you are outside W, you take a vector V within capital V, but outside W you take a vector small v, but for small v within W there is a unique vector which I call it projection or shadow. So, that the difference between small v and the shadow that is orthogonal to the entire subspace w perpendicular and that has the minimum norm that the difference between the or original one and the shadow if the shadow is taken to be like that. So, that the difference is orthogonal to the entire space then that difference will have minimum norm square that is the advantage that the difference will have minimum strength and that is why we will consider that shadow orthogonal projection. Okay, it exists unique and using uh, then we will go for projection decomposition, orthogonal projection based decomposition of subspaces. That from that we will march to again our optical filtering and all using this notion. Okay, so that is all. Thank you very much. I need to have your roll call quickly.